keyword so that going forward you will not find it hard to understand anything computer shop application okay so i will be taking the computer shop application and then find another entity called sales order line item okay so these are so this this is our master data and these are our transactional data transactional entities okay just come down you can see i have this wizard i have this template in my template wizard so maybe event handler okay so we are actually trying to implement the events okay this dot on means at the time of execution of your service this is the default event it will trigger okay and after that so this is the on service execution and before means so before sub service execution if you wanted to do some kind of data validation right so you can use this as a data validation sequence and after means after the service got executed right if you wanted to populate some extra data okay or manage your data population after the service execution result you already got so based on the result the final result if you wanted to modify something you can use this after event handler so to modify result okay so now next is so um, after means the record has been committed into the database then we are doing modifying or the record is not inserted before that we are modifying no so record no 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 so uh, everything the database operation will happen in the uh, in the on part itself okay so all the database okay. operation okay? okay so when we will be seeing the update delete and insert okay. it will be happening on the on part okay. and after that also if you wanted to do some other like entity change or maybe like you wanted to have the resulted value to be displayed in the different way in the front end or whoever is consuming sure. right in okay. that case you can use the after operation okay understood yeah so after that let me just take this one so read so read part here we have seen like different operation like get post put patch delete right so these are the http method so corresponding to all those http method like this is correspond read is correspond to what get 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 and similarly we will be having the insert or put method which is corresponding to what what is the method put post. put post and then update uh, yes. put 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 got it and delete Delete. Delete. So these are the HTTP method. HTTP method corresponding keyword that you have to use it here. Okay. And then the next part is as I was mentioning, this is the this is the CSN entity name. So this is the CSN entity name. Okay. So which is the entity that you have placed in your catalog service dot cds like this like this like this like this okay and then the function okay so actual things will happen inside the function here you are saying okay i want the event handler based on this on based on before or based on after it will use it will use the corresponding http method on this particular cs and entity and what actually it will do those things will be writing inside the function i hope i am trying to make it simple maybe sometimes yeah. so now you can understand right so and this particular function implementation also there are yeah. certain ways to do the function implementation okay so you can write the function simply as like this and in different places we will be writing the function with request response and next parameter and sometimes we will be writing the function as a arrow function okay maybe we can use the uh, use the parenthesis use the use use the use the parameters as well here request and response Okay. Is SAP gave some standards for it, like best practices for using functions, or we can use like any form of these three or four types of functions. Like. 
yeah so this depends on the requirement this is not sap forget about sap this is this sap doesn't uh, invented all those things these are the javascript okay. javascript coding okay so okay. thus we are learning the javascript now okay i could it's a it's a cpa capm not cloud application programming but just that's Correct. Right. cloud application programming model as because we are using so when we are implementing it we are using the cds package this is capm because sap has given you the framework all the different setup packages so there also sap has written all those javascript right okay. so to use to to use different kind of things so as because let's say like here the entities are automatically getting implemented with all the scratch queue operations how it is happening sap has implemented the dynamic code for that so all those coding is happening inside this you can imagine like that okay so you can imagine all those coding dynamic coding already happened inside this cds module okay okay so okay. this is how it is capm now uh Okay, I'll tell you where to learn more of the syntax from JavaScript point of view. See, it is very easy. If you dedicate one or two days, you can easily learn. And that's the reason I'm trying to help you how to learn it easily. Okay, so now if you see someone is writing this line of code, you can easily decode it, what it is happening, right? So that's the reason I'm writing it here. All those kind of keywords and functions. Okay, uh, so... so, so Partha, uh... Sorry, uh, so as per JavaScript uh, guidance, uh, we should use arrow functions only, right? Correct. Correct. So arrow functions also, or arrow function you can use. Okay. Even you can use function. There is so arrow function like it is easy to use, and certain other advantages will be there. You will get to know in coming topics, or you when you will be doing the practice, you will get to know. Okay. And one more important thing that I forgot. Okay. So we'll be using some kind of like async, uh, async function. Why this is async? Because in Node.js you can you can you know um, you might already know Node.js is asynchronous, right? Like whenever you will be doing some kind of operation, like let's say like you are performing some read operation, write operation, and after that you are doing something else, right? And you are thinking like whatever the resulted value will be coming from those operations, read operation, you will be getting those values, and after that you will be doing some other operation based on the resulted value, right? So it will not happen because when JavaScript will get executed, right, in Node.js, in Node.js uh, engine, right, Node engine, so it will not wait till you will get the result back from all those kind of operation, and eventually when you try to Try to implement something based on some resulted value, it will not work, right? But there is a way to make the asynchronous Node.js function to synchronous. So that's where we'll be learning this async await. Okay. So we'll be using this async function and we'll be using the await. Await uh, await keyword while we'll be doing some kind of transactions like read, create, update, delete. Okay. So those we'll be seeing. I hope like the context is clear now. So now I can quickly move into the topics also quickly move into the topic and uh, so i hope this is clear now so now the point is okay so i was showing you so how to debug so for debugging you just go to this three dots okay i have seen many people are showing debugging in a complex way this is not complex right so everything is simple in capm and business application studio okay so just come here, go to this run configuration, okay? I've seen people are creating the file manually. You'll, this pop-up window will come and it will ask you to select the project, okay? So what is the project name? Project name is SCG PRG1. But this is not necessary, okay? You can use HANA Cloud as well to do the debugging. But in that case, every time you have to deploy it. You can also bind HANA Cloud from here as well, okay? In the run configuration. But whenever you will do some kind of changes, you have to deploy and then you have to run it. So now I, if I wanted to start the debugging, so this you just use this run module. OK, so just you can do it here or you can come here and there also you can do. But when you will do it here, it will automatically navigate you to there in the debug. So see here it is coming here. Now before going into the debug, you can see there are different options. Variable, auch, call stack, loaded script and breakpoints. So you can already see where your existing breakpoints is set up if you wanted to change because it is difficult. It's like you have thousands of lines of code. You don't have to scroll where the debugging point is. You just come here and check it. And whatever the loaded script is, whatever the script is loading, you can check it here. As because I am loading this particular project. So all those details are coming here. So whatever the variable operations, it will be happening. Like wherever it will be passing through the lines of code and wherever whatever the variable constant that it will be passing through, it will come up here. But mainly from your perspective, you have to use this watch. OK, so as of now, let me just delete all those things. I have done this before. So it will be clear for you. And whenever you have wanted to check any kind of variable, any kind of object, you can check it from this particular place, watch. OK, so and one more thing you can see this particular. 
window is coming up, right? So what is this particular window? Okay, so you can see we have six buttons, right? So one is the pause, pause debugging. One is step over, means like it will execute line by line, just execute and uh, then come out of the line and then go to the next line, step, next step. And then if you wanted to go inside some kind of block, let's like you are there in a, some function call and uh, you wanted to go inside the function, okay, wherever the function got implemented. So there you can use this step into and you can use this step out from to come out of the function. But if you don't want to go inside the function, whatever it is happening, you can simply use this. It is similar to the app as well, F5, F6, F8. And then whenever you wanted to restart, so let's say like you have done some kind of JavaScript coding. So just keep in mind what whenever you have, you will be doing some kind of changes in .cds file, you have to deploy. You have to build the mtar file, you have to deploy. But whenever you are doing some changes in JavaScript and if you are doing, wanted to do some debugging, you don't have to deploy, you just restart it, restart this debugging, okay? And then if you wanted to stop the debugging, you can use this button. So this, this is the uh, simplest way that this uh, business application studio is providing for debugging purpose. Now, our intention was to go here and whenever you wanted to set some debugging point, you can just set it with this with this option, okay? So if you just uh, go to your code, JavaScript code, and go to the left-hand side, you will see this option to put the debugging point, like I'm just putting it in line number eight. Now, what I'll do is, so, I'll be just restarting, okay? So see what is happening. Restarting the debugging. So this debugging console will also tell you what is happening, okay? If you are printing something, if you are, sorry, if you are uh, running in some port, as because my service is running on 4004, okay? So this is the uh, local host port of Business Application Studio. Local host means it is not my machine, but SAP has given me one virtual machine, there it is running. So of course, like to access that particular machine, SAP is giving me this URL, okay? But at the end, this is local host. And you know all those kind of business application studio virtual machine concept in our previous training. I'm not repeating. So now you can see I have this get customer, update customer, insert customer, and delete customers, okay? So if I wanted to see like get customer, will you will it give me some result? As because see, it is stuck. It is not giving me any result. Why? Because it must stopped in the debugging point, right? So you can see it is it stopped, it stopped here stop here and now if i wanted to check some value okay so the request response those kind of values you can check it from here or you can just put the value the variable name let's say like i am putting the variable name here it is giving me all those kind of details whatever the request variable is having and here i can see i do not have any data because i have not deployed my project to sqlite that's the reason there is no data it is blank object you can also view it, okay? You can also visualize it. So now you can see, now you can see in the result, I have I have this value as well. Previously, I was not getting the value, right? And the console.log also, it will also print the values. Sorry, I'm sorry. So I should have removed this. Otherwise, anyway, so you, you have seen like, previously there was no data in this watch result one, but now I'm getting the data, okay? Ideally, I should have used this. Okay, so now you can convert your asynchronous call, asynchronous event call to synchronous function, event function. And of course, you'll be getting the data back as well. Okay, so what's next? Next is we'll be quickly converting this asynchronous. Let me again comment this. Now, what I wanted to do is I don't want to put this function, okay? I wanted to put as arrow function. I can do it like this as well. Okay. So if you are using multiple, you can check the values, whatever the the variable is having now, and based on that, you can also dynamically do the coding as well here. Okay. It, no one will stop you. So you can write the code here. Okay. Let's say uh, now req dot data. So req req dot data. So this particular uh, this particular value, uh, this particular variable req dot data will give you back this JSON object, right? For that, you need to define some JSON object to capture the data, right? So for that, I'm just writing let this JSON object ID, I'm just giving the same name, ID and email, okay? So I'm just assigning. You're getting it, right? So this is very simple. 
So you are just getting the data from this RQ data, RQ, RQ data, and you are assigning it to variable, to local variable of your function, ID and email. You can give any name, okay? And then you can use this further. Let's say I wanted to use it in my where clause. So how to use that? So let's say I will be using both, like ID, ID is ID, okay? Whichever the ID I'm having, I'm getting, I, I have declared and assigned value dynamically from my request parameter, correct? So, and, and email also, this time I will be directly picking it from here instead of hard coding. Okay. Right. Or or we can directly use rq.data.id or rq.data.email, right? In the very exactly. Case. That is also possible. Okay. So here I'm writing in a single line. That's the reason it is like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So fine. Now, uh, now my query should work, right? Or, or I think let's not waste much time. You got the uh, concept. Let me just do some more coding, okay? So that you will understand some more thing. So let's say like I will not define anything, okay? So in this particular scenario, what will happen? If I will not pass any parameter, right? It, if I will not pass any parameter, what will happen? It will not give me any result back, result data back, right? Because in that case, my ID and email will be blank, right? It will try to query with the same ID and email, and then it will not find anything, and then the output is blank. So for that particular purpose, what I'll do is ideally, I should use like if condition, if ID not equal to. So how to, how to put this kind of condition? So this is how you can do it, okay? If ID, the